Good day. My name is David Wilde, and this is the second part of a three-part lecture on Chapter 4 on the Organizational Environment from Connect Master Management 2.0. Let's look at the general environment for organizations. The general environment includes six forces that have an indirect effect on both the organization and its task environment. These include political, legal, and ethical forces, economic forces, technological forces, demographic forces, socio-cultural forces, and global forces. These conditions are dynamic, uncontrollable, and influential. Managers must continuously evaluate these general environmental forces because they will certainly alter long-term decisions and strategies for every organization. And now we'll talk about each of these six general force areas. First, political, legal, and ethical forces. Managers of any organization must keep up to date with changes in the political, legal, and ethical environments. Political forces include governmental executive power, regulations, and enforcement. Legal forces include the creation and interpretation of the law through the legislative and judicial processes. Finally, ethical forces create the foundation upon which most of our laws are created, interpreted, and subsequently enforced. Economic forces consist of labor and financial issues that affect organizations. Interest rates, unemployment, inflation, trade agreements, price controls, economic growth, and currency fluctuations are just some of the economic forces that impact business activity. Technology is the combination of tools, skills, and knowledge that an organization utilizes to convert inputs into outputs. Technological forces are the factors that influence this transformation by making the process more efficient and effective. Technology moves so quickly it seems like things become obsolete in the blink of an eye, and new products must be continuously developed to replace current ones, creating opportunities. Demographic forces highlight the shifts in population composition. Some of these demographic factors include age, gender, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, and social class. Managers should monitor the shifts in the population to determine how best to serve each group. Sociocultural forces focus on the norms, trends, and behaviors that emanate from a country's social structure and cultural values. Organizations that can quickly pick up on these trends and leverage their resources to address current trends and consumer behaviors will have a significant advantage over their competition. Class structures, lifestyles, values, and social movements all embody the sociocultural forces that impact organizations. From recycling to personal health, leadership to individuality, understanding the socio-cultural framework of any society will provide the clues necessary to run a successful business. Socio-cultural forces can dictate what products will be successful, what unwritten rules should be followed, and what product innovations may indeed be on the horizon. Finally, global forces. Global forces are the general environmental forces of a foreign country that affect domestic organizations. In other words, global forces are the economic, demographic, social, legal, political, and technological forces of one country impacting organizations in another country. Global forces are more prevalent today than they have ever been. As the world becomes smaller and organizations routinely cross national boundaries to conduct business, they must be aware of acceptable business practices in the countries they enter. Even if organizations conduct operations only domestically, they will certainly face international issues and competition. 
Due to technology and various trade agreements, it seems like every con economy is linked somehow today. So, in summary, in looking at the general environment, the general environment deals with market forces that are both dynamic and uncontrollable. These forces include political, legal, and ethical forces, economic forces, technological forces, demographic forces, sociocultural forces, and global forces. The general environment forces provide managers with necessary information that may influence an organization's long-term strategy. Now, let's turn to how we analyze the environment. There are many ways in which organizations monitor what's happening in the environment. The ability to react to environmental developments must be one of the organization's core strengths if it is going to be successful. Although the organizational environment can seem quite expansive, there are ways to collect and analyze environmental data. Some of these environmental observation methods include buffering, boundary spanning, forecasting, and benchmarking. And in this section, we will discuss each of these four techniques briefly. Buffering, one of the more traditional methods organizations have utilized to deal with environmental shifts and uncertainty is to create buffering divisions. Buffering occurs when company departments absorb much of the uncertainty from the overall environment so that the organization can perform its primary roles efficiently. Buffering divisions are primarily utilized in manufacturing firms. However, many service firms have chosen to remove these buffering units and expose parts of the organization directly to the environment. This service-oriented approach puts forth the position that only by being completely open to the uncertainties of the environment can the organization effectively interact with it. Boundary spanning. Successful organizations continuously scan their environment to detect information they believe is important for their business. Knowledge of information on trends, pricing, and competitors' strategies are only some of the areas that can help an organization gain a competitive advantage. Boundary spanning, however, encompasses not only the organization's ability to absorb important information from the environment, but it also includes the organization's tactical release of internal information into the external environment so that the organization can be viewed positively. An aspect of boundary spanning that has exploded in recent years as a result of the Internet is business intelligence. Business intelligence is defined as the process of using complex software programs to gather and analyze large amounts of internal and external data, often called big data, to detect certain patterns or trends that may exist. Another name for this practice is called analytics. Utilizing analytics to gain pertinent information from loads of seemingly unrelated, disorganized data gives organizations a leg up on the competition which could be worth millions of dollars in revenue. The third technique is forecasting. Forecasting involves trying to predict what will happen in the future. Sometimes, as in the case of quantitative forecasting, managers will use numerical data from past performance to predict future performance. On the other hand, qualitative for forecasting methods are more subjective and tend to focus on judgments and the opinions of experts. A manager's ability to accurately forecast the influence of various environmental forces on the organization is an important skill. At worst, it allows the organization to minimize the effects of environmental uncertainty by allowing it to utilize resources to prepare for the predicted environmental impact. At best, it provides an organization with an incredible competitive advantage as it positions itself to take full advantage of a new opportunity. In either case, effective forecasting is critical to an organization's survival and success. The final technique 
we'll discuss is benchmarking. Businesses are always comparing their own processes, performance, products, and prices to other companies in the same industry. This constant comparison that organizations make between themselves and others is called benchmarking. As organizations obtain more information about their competitors, they also gain a more accurate perspective of their own performance. Benchmarking allows companies to evaluate their own processes in relation to their competitors to find areas that need improvements, as well as those that could serve as a source of competitive advantage if done correctly. Organizations will tend to adopt an industry's best practices in order to improve their processes, performance, products, and price. So in summary on environmental analysis, the organization monitors the external environment by utilizing any of the four methods, buffering, boundary spanning, forecasting, and benchmarking. Buffering entails absorbing uncertainty from an organization's environment so that the firm can operate more efficiently. Boundary spanning occurs when an organization scans its environment to detect information if it believes is important for its business. Forecasting is the process of trying to predict what will happen in the future. Quantitative forecasting uses numerical data from past performance to help predict future performance. Qualitative forecasting uses subjective methods such as judgments and the opinions of experts to predict future performance. Benchmarking involves making ongoing comparisons between an organization and its competitors with regard to overall processes and performance. All of these methods glean information from the environment and help organizations to predict the strategic direction of their competitors and their industry. And with that, we end the second part of our three-part lecture on Chapter 4 on the Organizational Environment.